Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Job Interviews, What to Expect and How to Prepare. My name is Adam Mayer, and I'm the Director of Career Development in the Center for Career Services at Montclair State University. Today, we'll cover an overview of job interviews. We'll discuss tr traditional and behavioral-based interviewing, along with associated interview questions, as well as review the five steps to successful preparation. You will have the opportunity sub to submit questions by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You can send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them as time per permits. So let's get started. So typically there are two types of interviews. The first is traditional, and we'll look at some of those, again, associated questions. Those are things like, why should you hire me? Why did I apply for this position? Those kinds of things. The very, again, traditional. The second type of interview is what they call behavioral. And this came about in the 70s, and some of it's based in psychology in that Employers want to know what you've done in the past so they can predict what you do in the future. So the key here is it's not about the hypothetical. What would you do if that sort of thing? Behavioral-based questions are tell me about a time when. So they want actual examples, and we'll look at those questions as well. So again, we'll start with traditional interviewing techniques. Uh, the first might be, you know, a simple question, tell me about yourself. The key here is to stay professional. We're not talking about social or personal stories. Some interviewers will ask you those sort of questions. You know, you know, what are your hobbies? What do you like? What are you interested in? And that's understandable. If that comes up, do again try to stay professional. Share that information if you feel it's right. You need to see to see what the interviewers are like and again researching the employer and their culture is key to answering that sort of question so if you want to stay professional you want to talk about that celeb second bullet right there include education experience strengths that tie into the job description that third bullet there is an easy one to sort of stay professional and keep you on track and then keep it R&R &R. what's recent and generally that's 10 years and what's relevant and typically that what relates to the position along with transferable skills and those are the soft skills like communication initiative problem solving so to have those sort of answers prepared ahead of time that's that's pretty key another traditional interview question why should I hire you and that kind of seems silly to me because it's like, well, hey, look, I, you know, I submitted my resume, my cover letter, if that was needed, and why are you asking me this? But again, it's a traditional question. Sometimes those do exist, but we do have to be prepared to answer them. So you want to draw parallels between the job description and your background. Easy way to do that. If it's a phone interview, maybe even if it's a Skype interview or video interview, sometimes you can have that information next to you especially if it's a phone interview. You can highlight the skills, print it out. I mean, make it easy or, you know, have it on the laptop or you know, your desktop next to you and highlight the, the skills that they need and the skills that you have and then draw parallels to them. When we say be able to draw, be able to draw specific examples from your resume, anything that's on your resume, you need to be conversant with. So if you talk about coursework, you talk about a project, you talk about volunteerism, any of those items an employer can ask about and be curious about with good reason. So all the more reason to be prepared to answer those sort of things. So know in and out what it is that you've listed on your resume. Again, we're looking at traditional interviews. The third one, what kind of experience have you had? Again, kind of a silly question, 
because it's likely that they've seen our resume, right? How else are we getting this actual interview? But again, it may happen because not everybody may have seen your resume, may have seen your applications. Sometimes there are search committees with many people. Sometimes there are panel interviews with many people. So all the more reason to be able to share your experience that you've had for those who haven't seen your resume. So we can see here, include any experiences that are professionally related, including full-time jobs, part-time, summer, internship, class projects, research, and volunteer work. Whether you were paid or not for an experience, it's still an experience and you still learned from it. So that's something you can share. So again, that's sort of the, the backbone of a traditional interview. So here, this is much more common. And again, as I said, this came about in the 70s. What can you expect from a behavioral interview? And it, it makes sense. It's not hypothetical. It's not sort of information we've shared already, typically. So the past is the most accurate predictor of the future. And behavioral interviews examine these sort of accomplishments. So when you hear a phrase during the interview, starts out with tell me about a time when you know right off the bat it's a behavioral based question and you know they're asking about the past something about describe a situation where again they're asking about the past it's a behavioral based question so we need to prepare for these things so many questions exam examine leadership teamwork problem solving and initiative. These are the sort of soft skills that are peculiar because they're not concrete. We need to make them concrete by looking at sort of how a way we can tell the story. So this is an easy way to set it up. Use the star technique and I realize that's kind of cheesy, right? Be a star, hey, be a star during the interview, but it works. Years and years ago when I used to job search, I used this technique and it worked very, very well. I had job offers, I had interviews themselves. It does work. So S-T-A-R, S for situation, T for task, A for action, and R for result. And then we say there in parentheses, when possible, quantify the results. What's cool about the when you get to the point of the R, Maybe you uh, you trained people. You could talk about the number of people that you trained, so you quantify there. If you've handled money, if you've done some fundraising, you can quantify the amount there. But the secondary thing is when, when you get to result, you know you're done with your answer. Because I don't know about you guys, but with myself, years and years ago, as I said, when I was interviewing, I'm like having a conversation with myself while I'm answering the question. And I would second guess myself and say, hey, wait a second, did, did I answer the whole question? Have I said enough? You know, what's going on here? I feel like I'm going off the rails. What's the story? When you get to the result, not only do you quantify if you can, but you also know that you're done with your answer. You've gone through S-T-A-R. So when you get to R, you finish up. You know that you're done with your answer. And that gives the employer an opportunity to probe to ask follow-up questions based on your answer. We want to give them this opportunity for one of the biggest reasons is so that the interview is a conversation. There's nothing worse than an interview that's robotic where somebody asks a question, somebody provides an answer, da, 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 you know, that kind of thing. You want to be able to provide opportunities for conversation. When it's a conversation, it's not an interview. That's key. So S-T-A-R, that technique illustrated here. Again, we know it's a behavioral-based question. Describe a situation where you held a leadership position. So these are quick notes you might do. You might put them on a Post-it, leave it on your desktop, might put them on a Word doc. Again, if it's a phone interview, it's pretty easy to kind of get around this stuff, but when it comes face to face, you need to prepare. 
You can meet with your career advisor. You can go through what's called hire a Red Hawk. Meet with those individuals, and they can help you provide, or they can help you with uh, preparing for interviews. So S T A R S is the situation. So this individual is nominated a philanthropy chairperson. You can say task, raise some cash. Action headed a team of 15. What's key there is what they quantified even before they got the, to the result. Led a team of 15. The result they sold 600 tickets, recruited 50 participants, and raised $2,000. There's a lot of numbers there, and numbers are potent in interviews. Because a lot of what we talk about are soft skills. Hey, I'm a team player, right? I take initiative. But by using STAR to provide an example, in this case, leadership, it's critical. Because then it's a story, it's interesting, and it's concrete. So any good interviewer is going to ask you at the end, do you have questions for me? Or us, again, in case it's you know a search committee or a panel, that kind of thing. So you do want to prepare questions in advance because the literal definition of interview is to determine whether or not a match exists. So that just stands to logic that we should ask them questions. So what I would do is bring a pad folio if it's face-to-face. If it's not face to face, again, have your laptop, have you, your phone, whatever it is where you have your notes, and ask questions. I recommend anywhere from five to eight. It depends on the time. It also depends on whether or not during the interview the employer has already answered those questions. So you need a few in your back pocket. You may not be able to get to all of them. You may only be able to get to two. So. These are a few that you can ask. Can you tell me more about the training program? That might be online, so I might be able to look that up. If hired, whom would I report to? I might be able to figure that out through LinkedIn, maybe. What upcoming, upcoming pro projects do you anticipate? That's a cool question. I love this fourth one. What qualities will the successful candidate possess? And we'll look at that more in a second. May I have a business card? Obviously, that's you know, face to face. And then the last one is always one you want to ask, regardless of what's going on. If they say, all right, we're done. Well, I do have one question. If you've been given the time, what is the next step in this process? And that's key. So let's look at two of probably the best questions if you're short on time that you should ask. So fourth one. What qualities will the successful candidate possess? With that, the employer is going to give you information that is key, essential to the position. So with that, whatever it is that the employer shares with you or the employers, the interviewers share with you, you want to reflect those qualities that you possess legitimately that they need in your thank you email, the follow up. So I, you know, you can have a paragraph in there. I realize some of the qualities the successful candidate will possess relate to blah, blah, you know, one of those things. I can assure you I have those skills as related to and then give them examples. It's more that behavioral based thing. So customize those thank yous, reflect on those qualities that they need that you have and give them concrete examples. And again, what is the next step in the process? You don't want to go through the phone interview, the Skype interview, the Zoom interview, the face-to-face -face interview, whatever, you know, whatever it ends up being, whatever method, you do want to come back to the fact that, okay, am I supposed to contact them? Are they going to contact me? How does this all go? So we ask that question and, and go from there. So, second half of this webinar, five steps for successful interview preparation. The number one thing, and this is, nah, I shouldn't say this is the number one thing. There are five of them. These are not necessarily in order. But I think one of the key things is, number one, 
research the employer, research the salary. Know as much as humanly possible about the employer. Because for some of us, it's hard to talk about ourselves. We may be comfortable talking about ourselves, but we haven't maybe developed enough STARs for the interview. So a good way to prepare for an interview is to talk about who, not necessarily ourselves, but them, the employers. So research them as much as possible. I worked with somebody years ago in career counseling, and I'm trying to think who it was. But this individual, they made their homepage on their browser, the employer that they, the employer's website that they were going to interview with. So anytime they opened up a browser to go on the internet, they were met by what? The employer's website. So it's something to check out. Uh, what do we say? We check out LinkedIn for sure, ticker symbols, if it's a publicly traded company, salary.com, bls.gov slash OCO. So you want to find out and research as much as possible. Because again, when we get to R and STAR, we get to results we stop. With this, we can share as much as we can about the employer and then stop and have them reflect on what it is that maybe they've done in advance or things that they're thinking of doing on basic projects or excelling. So again, this is about the conversation. Know as much about them as possible and share that with them during the interview. So that's the first of five steps. The second step is know yourself. I know there's a lot of text on this page, but uh, prepare STAR. Again, you know, a little post-it note on the computer, however you want to put it. Rehearse these sort of things. It's key. If you are asked, we're looking at the second bullet, uh, when you would like to interview, and they give you a number of different times, know if you're a morning person, a night person, and prepare. So, looking at the third, you want to test drive to the interview, if you can. I know a lot of folks use the Waze app. That might be something you want to look into. If you haven't already, this way you can see traffic patterns. The fourth bullet, arrive early. So, typically that's 15 minutes prior to the interview. So, if I've got a 2, two o'clock interview, I need to walk through the door. If it's face to face at 4:45, right? Did I say that right? Two o'clock. So if it's two o'clock, we want to be there at 1:45. Just checking. Not too good at math over here. Anyway, uh, second to last bullet. Know your resume. We talked about that. Be conversant with everything. And then the last one. It's important to be courteous to everyone you meet. Make eye contact. Shake their hand. Because who knows who has as much influence as another in any situation, whether it's hiring, project management, any of those things. Because oftentimes, you know, even if it's a larger corporation, mid-size, or even a mom and pop, the folks who interview you will ask, what were your impressions of that individual? So all the more reason to be courteous to everyone you meet. So that's step two, know yourself. Step three, know what to wear. So with this, there's a number of different things to look at. Take a look at their internet footprint, see what the hired employees are wearing. If you want to go conservative, this is the suggestion you can see here in number three. Conservative, clean, neat appearance, little to no cologne for women, conservative suit, skirt should come below the knee, pantyhose and clothes, again, very, very conservative, minimal jewelry, makeup, and perfume may want to pull hair back from your face. Again, take a look at their internet footprint. It depends on the industry. It depends on the company. 
use your best judgment and go from there but no matter what I'm appear presentable and what you can do too is um, you know look up interview questions on the internet whether they be traditional or behavioral and have friends family member if you can get access to a career advisor and do a mock interview and wear the clothes that you would wear to the interview itself this way you're comfortable in the clothing and you've sort of prepared it's just as if you were gonna run a race or a marathon that type of thing we always prepare first so this is a general guideline it depends on industry it depends on the employers internet footprint take a look at those items and then make your decisions from there in terms of what to wear so that's number three number four you want to bring additional copies of your resume print it on good quality resume paper the reason why we print it and that I know this is you know a fossil we typically don't print resumes anymore but you want to be prepared in case you meet with more than one person and not everyone has the has a copy of your resume so you want to be prepared have copies of those you can go to Staples Office Max and you can get resume paper it's high rag content it's thicker than regular paper you can actually feel it you can see sort of the the braids in the paper sort of thing and the worst color to get and typically they don't sell it that way but in terms of printing resumes you want to get off-white gray slate gray something like that because most of the color paper on people's desks is what it's white right so we want to stand out and have a different color so you can bring certs, degrees, brochures, publications, and most of those things I might make copies of. I wouldn't give originals out, and I, I think we all can appreciate that. But the third is a pad folio. So there you can put your resumes, certs, degrees, copies of those pieces, employer questions in the pad folio. Oftentimes when you buy one, there's a sleeve on the right hand side where you can put your documents resume at Al right and on the right hand side is typically a pad that's where you can write down your questions leave some space because in the end is it cool to take notes during an interview absolutely we want to do that because it shows that we're engaged it shows that we're learning that we're on point and then the fourth bullet there is surely shut off the smartphone um, I wouldn't even have it on vibrate because you know even if that comes on because you want to show pure engagement that you care about this position so I would shut it off I would, you know I might even leave it in the car something like that depends okay so that's four and then the last is be aware of your speech mannerisms and nonverbal behavior a firm handshake there's the web of your hand that's between your pointer finger and your thumb you typically want to go to the web of somebody's hand and you know don't overthink it but you want to look them in the eye give them a good handshake moderate your speech rate we don't want to talk too fast too slow think of it like music you know the beat changes from the chorus to the verse from the verse to the pre-chorus to the chorus there's lots going on so we want to change that up keeps people interested the third bullet there minimize ums and likes so that really comes about in terms of preparation so again having traditional and behavioral based questions based on you know interviewing techniques you want to do mock interviews friends family members practice enunciate that's important to give you know each vowel each consonant give them credence right I actually think I'm trying to speak more clearly now doing the best I can avoid nervous habits nail biting you know if you if you fidget make sure those things are out of your way like we say here playing with a pen research has shown that keeping your hands on the table or lap there's a difference in perception so you want to keep your hands visible you think of the old adage you know he or she's got something up their sleeve 
you know, that doesn't have a positive connotation. So keeping your hands visible, the research has shown that people are viewed as more honest than those who keep their hands under the table. So use them to tell a story, not overly so, but keep them visible. Maintaining eye contact, that's a typical thing uh, that we do want to achieve. That shows that you're engaged and it also shows that you're listening. Uh, you can mirror the body language of the interviewer. This is, uh, this is obviously this is personal uh, if you're comfortable doing it, but you can sit in the same physical space in your area, say across the table, if it's a video interview, sort of look at the way people are handling themselves and sort of mirror that direction that suggests psychologically a connection between you, you and those who are interviewing you. Don't slouch, that's pretty particular, no big deal there. So if I could, uh, we'll finish up here and I do want to open it up to questions if there are questions. Uh, I think that's important to address. So if you have them, you can type them into the questions pane. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Adam, we have a question here. Yes. Um, how do you go about finding your transferable skills? Okay, good question. Uh, let me go out of this workshop and we'll go back in. Let's see. Transferable skills are really kind of um, somewhat difficult because they're soft skills primarily. There are 10 of them. And if we look, let's see. So you're at Montclair.edu slash career services. And if you go to upcoming events, click on view events, scroll down. Got a lot going on, by the way. This is where you guys are, job interviews. We got a career fair coming up February 20th, government law and profit. Had a good job with it. Just, this is cool. JC Penny suit up. I can go on and on about that. I mean, you can get an excellent interview outfit really, really quick for a good price. But if we scroll down and we look at, again, Montclair.edu, Career Services, click on Upcoming Events, and then click on On-Demand Workshops. This will bring you to our YouTube channel, just as a reference. And here it is, Transferable Skills, what they are and how to market them. It's pretty brief, it's not that long. Um, I try to make it fairly painless, but this is where you look at things like communication skills and you come up with an STAR for that. This is where you look at initiative and come up with an STAR for that. This is where you look at teamwork and come up with an STAR for that. And it's especially helpful when changing industries say going from corporate to higher ed, from nonprofit to corporate, what, however it is, you can use this sort of um, STAR to look at those skills and then go from there. But uh, again, so it's MSU Career Workshops. This is on YouTube and transferable skills are illustrated here. Again, it's fairly brief and it suggests all the content that I mentioned previously It'll give you a good idea of how to sort of market that information. Any other questions for today? I believe that was the only question. 
Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Chrissy. So thank you everyone for attending today's webinar, Job Interviews, What to Expect and How to Prepare. Today's webinar was recorded and will soon be archived on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash MSU career workshops slash video. Not sure what my computer thinks it's doing right now. Collecting photos. Real good. Sorry about that. Once you leave today's webinar, you'll receive a survey on the presentation. Please provide your feedback as this will help us improve our services going forward. Thank you again for joining us today. Be sure to take advantage of career services and have a great rest of the week. Thank you.